Welcome to this second in this series of Sports Science Careers Tutorials brought to you by SportScienceTutor.com. In the first tutorial we looked at the role of the sports biomechanist and today we're going to look at that of the exercise physiologist. And I'm really distinguishing between the sports physiologist and the exercise physiologist here because in my mind the sports physiologist is concerned with the optimization of human performance whereas the exercise physiologist is concerned with the optimization of human health. So a sports physiologist is going to be working with athletes or an athletic population, whereas an exercise physiologist is probably going to be working with the general population. In terms of typical employers... As with sports biomechanics, this is going to depend on whether we envisage ourselves developing a research career or whether we're more interested in becoming an applied exercise physiologist. In terms of research, again, universities are going to be the main employers, although if we're more interested in health-related fitness as opposed to performance-based research, then there may be other options out there as well. Um, but from the applied perspective, the primary employers are likely to be, certainly in Britain, the National Health Service, but also private healthcare organisations. But if we take the NHS as our example, then we have here a person specification from a job advert that was placed by the NHS for a clinical respiratory physiologist in a hospital. And we can look at the educational and experiential requirements that have been placed on this person specification in order to establish what would be required of an individual for such a role. And we can see that the from an educational perspective, they're only really looking for someone uh, who's educated to undergraduate level, although they do specify that a degree in something like clinical physiology would be suitable. So the question is, what can a sport and exercise science graduate do to enhance Enhance their level of competitiveness in this job market compared to, for example, a clinical physiology undergraduate. Uh, and one potential option is master's level study. And there are various relevant MSc degrees that would be worth and worthy of consideration. One option would be something like an MSc in clinical exercise physiology, and there are various such degrees available within the United Kingdom. But an alternative area of specialism could be cardiac rehabilitation, and there are a number of MSc degrees available which in cardiac re rehabilitation which are specifically designed for sport and exercise science degree graduates. Alternatively, if we were more interested in perhaps developing a research-based career, then molecular exercise physiology is actually an increasing area uh, within sports science research and so a master's degree within molecular exercise physiology could be really valuable and I know Aberdeen certainly used to run an MSc in molecular exercise physiology, I'm not sure if it's still running, uh, but currently uh, the University of Bedfordshire certainly run an MSc in molecular exercise physiology. Or perhaps we're not sure whether we want to go down the sports performance route or the uh, health related fitness route in which case keeping our options open might be um, a useful exercise and something like the sport and health sciences masters provided by Exeter University would be a valuable option in such a situation but maybe master's level study isn't for us and we want maybe just a basic certification or diploma uh, which we can use to add a level of specialism to our level of expertise developed through our undergraduate degree and exercise referral in this instance is probably something worthy of consideration and GP exercise referrals schemes are uh, of increasing 
predominance within the industry, shall we say, and we can obtain various diplomas and certifications within exercise referral. Um, another option could be something like the NSCA Special Population Certification. So the NSCA is actually a USA organization and it's the National Strength and Conditioning Association and they have a certification for working with special populations. But if we wanted to become even more specialized than that, then there are options within the UK. Certainly Premier Global offer uh, specialized um, diplomas if for working with individuals with diabetes and working with individuals with low back pain. And obtaining one of those would really give you a very specialized level of expertise which would um, enable you to develop a very specific niche within the jobs market. Hopefully that's been of use to you and if you'd like more detailed uh, careers advice then you may be interested in mentor over at sportsciencetutor.com.